Good morning, saints. If you can't hear me this morning, just maybe wave your hand or something. Sometimes my wife tells me I'm up here and I'm speaking, but she can't hear me. So just in the event that you have that problem, just let me know and I'll try to move closer to the mic so you can. We have been talking about prophets, well, prophets in the Old Testament, because I feel that they've had a great message to share. I hope that it's been to your benefit. Um, we've talked about worship, the worship that God expects and what God is looking for. And sometimes it's not what we think it is. You know, we come to church and we're ready to applaud and hear the sound, the songs and the sermon and so forth. But that we found that that's not necessarily what God is looking for if our heart's not right. And we take for granted sometimes the things that he is looking for. We have found that he, he wants us to, uh, as Pastor Brown used to say, have short accounts with our brothers and sisters. That if we see we have a problem, we go to our brother and sister. Today we want to talk, we've talked about salvation. Principles of salvation. That God wants all men saved. That all men have sinned. And he died for all men. Today I want to talk about how you get there. I, I said uh, about a week ago that I wanted to at some point talk about. We asked a question about people in the Old Testament. In old times. Did they hear Christ? And if so, how did they get saved? And we're going to take a look at that because Paul, and if you turn with me to the book of Romans, chapter 9. Paul was preaching, and this, is, this was the dilemma that he had. And, and it's the same problem today. Many people today seek to gain salvation in the same way that the Jews did. By their works. By their works. And that is by trying to keep the Mosaic law. And it's happening the same today. And I, I have a question for you in just a moment. But I just want to take a look. Romans chapter 9 beginning at verse 30. What shall we say then? That the Gentiles who followed not after righteousness have attained to righteousness? Even the righteousness which is of faith? But Israel who followed after the law of righteousness have not attained to the law of righteousness? Why? Because they sought it not by faith, but as it were, by the works of the law. For they stumbled at that stumbling stone. As it is written, Behold, I lay in Zion a stumbling stone, and a rock of offense, and whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. I have a question for you. Unless you've always been saved, then I have a question for you. Before you got saved, what were you trusting on to get you saved? Or did you think about it? Before you were saved, what were you trusting to get you saved? Maybe you didn't even think about it. How, what did you think about pleasing God? Did you believe in God? Did you believe there was a God? Many of us grew up in so-called Christian homes. So many of us believed that there was a God. 
But how did you please him before you got saved? And I would dare say that many of us trusted the Ten Commandments. Because that's what we knew. We knew thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not lie, thou shalt not uh, bear false witness, thou shalt not covet. Um, and, and, and the other commandments. So we tried to live by those. Or maybe you trusted the other one. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Thank you, brother. <laughs> um, so, so maybe you trusted that one. Maybe you had something else. Maybe you had nothing at all. But that was the problem that the Jews had. They trusted the law. Because that's what they were given. To get them saved. And so what we see here is that Paul says. That trusting. He goes on to say that uh, trusting the law was a stumbling stone in verse 32. Now, we see a strange dichotomy here. Think about it. He's telling us in verse 30 that the Gentiles who followed not after righteousness, they didn't go after righteousness by seeking the law, but they have attained righteousness. But the Jews, and he says, even the righteousness which is of faith. But the Jews, Israel, who followed after the law of righteousness, had not attained the law of righteousness. And I hope I'm not losing you. Some Jews have been saved. Some Jews did believe in the gospel of Christ. You think about Pentecost. You know that they got saved. 3,000 got saved. Some Jews did believe in Christ. But others, and others have been saved since. Uh, you think about the friends of Israel. They were Jews, uh, Jews, for, Jews for Jesus. But Paul said there was a problem. Matter of fact, in chapter 10, verse 1, he says, Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. Israel, in this dispensation, is not, as a nation, is not saved. And that's Paul's desire. That was his desire that they become saved. But think about it. The Gentiles, who didn't seek after the law, have become saved. And how do they get it? Not by the works of the law. But the righteousness which comes by faith. Faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. So he, he, th there's this paradox. The Jews sought it and they didn't get it. But the Gentiles who didn't seek it have received it because they received it by faith and not by works. And that's important. Why? Because many people still seek it by works. And they haven't received it. One of the things that um, Paul talks about here is this fact of stumbling. How did Israel stumble? Uh, in Isaiah chapter 8 verses 13 and 15 Paul says they stumbled in verse 32 he says why because they sought it not by faith but as it were by the works of the law for they stumbled at the stumbling stone and that's one of the way, reasons I love the Old Testament because if you get back and go down and try to study, understand what it's talking about, it helps us understand the new. 
And so what I say that Isaiah chapter eight, verse beginning at 13. And I believe mine is the new living translation. He says, make the Lord of heaven's armies holy in your life. He is the one you should fear. He is the one who should make you tremble. He will keep you safe. But to Israel and Judah, he will be a stone that makes people stumble. A rock that makes them fall. And for the people of Jerusalem, he will be a trap and a snare. Many will stumble and fall, never to rise again. They will be snared and captured. Now, how can that be? We just want to share one or two more. You've heard some of these. Therefore, thus, Isaiah chapter 20, verse 16. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, behold, I lay in Zion a foundation stone, a tri stone, precious stone, a sure foundation. He that believeth shall not make haste. Um, and then uh, 1 Corinthians 1, 23. But we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block and unto the Greeks foolishness. And one last one, 1 Peter chapter 2, 8. And a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient, whereunto also they were appointed. Now, why did they stumble? Why did the Jews miss salvation? When God gave the law, he gave the Ten Commandments, and he, he, he chose Israel to be his special people. They were to take the gospel. They were to be an example to all the nations by their lives. But we see that when Christ told them to go into the land and to take the land and to destroy what was in the land, they disobeyed. Matter of fact, they were disobeying all along in many different ways. But one of the purposes for those sacrifices was that they would look forward to one who would bear their sins. That, that's what the... That's what the um, the, um, the the sacrifices represent represent it. I, I will there be, I'll, I'll get to go through that at some later date. But the, the point that I want to make today is that when it came to the law, it said that in, in uh, James pointed out that for whosoever shall keep the whole law, and yet offend in one point is guilty of all. In other words, you know that in order to be declared righteous, you have to keep all the law. You couldn't fail in one point. And Galatians says, for as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. For it is written, cursed is everyone that committed not in all things that are written in the book of the law to do them. Galatians 3.10. And in verse 11 says, but that, but that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. It is evident, for the just shall live by faith. And the law is not of faith, but the man that doeth them shall live in them. In other words, if you're going to keep the law, you have to keep the whole law. Couldn't break one part of it. But in the time of Christ, he said this, Matthew 5, 20. For I say unto you, that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, you shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. Ye have heard that it was said by them of old time, that I shall not kill. And whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of judgment. Now, what was the problem with the the Pharisees. Well, 
they tried to keep the letter of the law outwardly. In other words, they tried to do the things that you see. In other words, thou shall not kill. Well, they say we never killed anybody. We never stolen. Uh, we've never committed adultery. And we've never gone to the grocery store and just picked up one of those grapes and ate it. And we've never gone to work and take some of those pencils that are there or pads and just uh, forget about them. We've never gone and not told the truth, you know, and crossing our fingers and all kind of stuff. You see, Christ pointed out that it was in your heart that you sinned. He pointed out that for them, they thought that if they did not literally steal or kill, they were not guilty. Jesus went further showing them that the true righteousness of the law was kept by how one acts from the inside. Our thoughts. What it really required was not just to obey outwardly, but to obey inwardly from the intent of the heart. One would break the righteousness of the law long before they committed the physical act. Why? Because you thought about it. You thought about what you were going to do. If you were going to, um, if you hated your brother, that was akin to murder, according to Leviticus 17, uh, 19, 17. And, and I just want to turn there a moment. Just turn there with me, because I want you to be able to share this when you talk to somebody. Because, you know, as we go further in, in, in this uh, study in, 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 19, in, in verse 10, you may run into people at work. Maybe people that you know. And who's going to tell them? Who's going to share the gospel? We, we have to. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 17. It says, Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Thou shalt surely rebuke thy neighbor and not allow sin upon him. And as many as I've been reading, long as I've been reading scripture, I never saw that one before. I never, at least I never recall it. 1 Corinthians, no, excuse me, 1 John chapter 3, verse 15. And it reads, Whosoever hated his brother is a murderer, and ye know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. So, the same went for adultery. You, you've heard it, that uh, in, in Matthew chapter 5, verse 28, where he said that, But I say unto you that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her have committed adultery with her already in his heart. So we sin long before we do the physical act. And the, the point uh, that the, the uh, Pharisees didn't consider themselves guilty because they did not, uh, they, they claimed that they never did the physical act. You see, so they were missing the whole point of the law. The, the, it said in Galatians that the law was our school teacher. It was to show us our need for Christ. And the sacrifices were a way of reminding them that they had a need for Christ to look forward to his coming. Now, one of the, um, one of the verses that I looked at 
and I, I didn't write it down, but I hope I can find it. Matthew chapter 5. And I don't see it. It must be in another place. I didn't write it down. But it has to do with um, the Pharisees, how they go about devouring. Maybe it's chapter 22. Let's turn to Matthew chapter 22. I don't see it. But he, he, he had a, he was talking about the Pharisees. And he pointed out, here it is, um, here it is, Matthew chapter 23 and verse 14. And he says, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you devour widows' houses, and for a pretense make long prayers. Therefore, ye shall receive the greater condemnation. And in uh, the New Living Translations, that has to do with they cheated widows out of their property. They cheated widows out of the property. Now, in going through the book of Amos and uh, uh, Isaiah and some of the other scriptures that we've looked at, we saw how God talked about righteousness and just being just and so forth. Um, and, and this is what God was looking for. Uh, the Pharisees missed salvation because they were trying to get it by keeping the law. By their works. It doesn't work. Christians today are justified by their trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. By, be, by that Christ is righteous. Uh, that he died, uh, that he lived a righteous life, and that he died in our place for our sins. And when we trust him, it's accounted to us or imputed to us or, uh, as, as being righteous before God. And so, what did, but the Pharisees missed that point. And therefore, um, therefore, Paul is saying, uh, the his Jewish people, if you recall, they rejected Christ uh, when he came. Now, I want to just uh, just go back a moment to sh show why this is all important. Turn back with me to Deuteronomy chapter ten, verse twelve. And the Lord told him what was important to him. Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 12. And we'll look at 13 too. He says, And now, Israel, what doth the Lord thy God require of thee? But to fear the Lord thy God, to walk in all his ways, and to love him, and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul to keep the commandments of the Lord and his statutes which I command thee this day for thy good and uh, in another and then verses 18 and 19 he says he doth execute the justice for the fatherless and widow and loveth the sojourner, or stranger, in giving him food and raiment. Love ye therefore the sojourner, for ye were sojourners in the land of Egypt. And so we see that the Lord is, he wants, he's looking at how we love him, and worship him, and how we love others and um, take a look at Micah he, he has something similar to say Micah chapter 6 verse 8 
Michael 6, verse 8. Uh, after he goes through a number of things that, um, you know, to determine if these would please the Lord, he finally arrives at, he have shown thee, O man, what is good, and what doth the Lord require of thee, but to do justly, and to love mercy, and to walk humbly with thy God. In other words, again, how we treat one another. Uh, and then, lastly, um, Matthew chapter 22, verse 37. And, and in this part, he says, um, one of the Pharisees asked him, um, no, one of the lawyers asked him a question. Uh, in, in, in verse 35, he says, then one of them who was a lawyer asked him a question, testing him and saying, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? And Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like it, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Have you, have you, had, have you had people to tell you they love God, and then you look at them and you wonder, well, wait a minute. Is, if that's an example of loving God, you know, you might shake your head. And, and the point is, is that we can say a lot of things, but do you really love him? Are you really committed to him? Are you walking with him? And that's why he says to love him with all your heart and with all your soul. The, I bet if you ask the Pharisees, matter of fact, you could ask them. They, this throughout the scriptures. If they love God, they love God. They will tell you that. That's why they were zealous. Paul himself was zealous for God. But if you look at what the scriptures say, you can tell that was a whole nother story. And so, um, Israel sought it not by righteous, righteousness, excuse me, not by, not by faith, the righteousness of faith, but they sought uh, to be declared righteous with God by their works. And uh, by works shall no man be justified. Now, going over to, um, going back to Romans chapter 10, and verse 10 excuse me Romans chapter 10 verse 1 we see that um, in verse 1 it says brethren my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved and Paul had a great desire to see his people saved. Um, he says so also in chapter 9, verses 1 and 3. I say the truth in God, I lie not. My conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Spirit, that I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. For I could wish that I myself were accursed from God, for my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh. And this is, I, I, I feel this is important um, because it's where we were at one time before we came to know the Lord Jesus Christ. And it's where a lot of people are today. Um, trying to do what they think is good works uh, helping the poor uh, providing food and all kind of other things but it's not salvation 
And so we see here that Paul was still burdened for his people to reach them with the gospel. And so that raises the question, are we burdened for God's people or for the people in this world? Um, whether it be our family uh, or people we work with, uh, either individually or even as a church. We need to be committed to, to taking the gospel out and, uh, and sharing it uh, and understanding the importance um, because the scriptures say that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. It means somebody took the word to us. At some point, someone shared the gospel with us. And that's how we came to faith in Christ. Um, I remember um, uh, Elder King talking about that he heard the gospel over the radio through Pastor Brown. Uh, I happened to be at church in all the years I was going to church and never understood what was going on until one day the lady, uh, I don't know who it was, somebody came and as we, I must have been around 11 or 12 years old. And they brought us up to the front bench. And, and um, I remember them telling us that we were sinners. Now I'm 11 years old. I'm trying to figure out, well, how am I a sinner? Yeah, yeah, I, I, I'm not perfect. So I know I'm a sinner. And so I believe that. I'm a sinner. I needed Christ. Because they said that believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you can be saved. Now, I didn't know who Jesus was, but I knew one thing. If God sent him and he died for me, then I'm trusting him. That's all I knew. And it took me a lot of years after that to come to know who Jesus was or is. So... The point is, is that we have to share the gospel. That people get saved. I don't know how you got saved. I'd love to hear the story sometime. But at some point, somebody shared the gospel with us. So we need to share the gospel as well. Now, so what we see here with the Pharisees or with Israel is that when and I want you to turn with me to Acts chapter 28 Acts chapter 28 verse beginning at verse 17 Paul Paul had just arrived at Rome and he He, he, he was free I believe it's in verse 16 it says and when he had come to Rome the centurion delivered the prisoners to the captain of the guard but Paul was permitted to dwell by himself with a soldier that kept him and it came to pass that after three days Paul called the chief of the Jews together and when they were come together he said unto them men and brethren though I have committed nothing against the people or customs of our fathers Yet was I delivered prisoner from Jerusalem into the hands of the Romans, who, when they had examined me, would have let me go, because there was no cause of death in me. But when the Jews spoke against it, I was constrained to appeal unto Caesar, not that I had anything to accuse my nation of. For this cause, therefore, I have called for you to see you and speak with you, because for the hope of Israel... I am bound with this chain. And they said unto him, We neither receive letters or out of Judea concerning thee, neither any of thy brethren that came showed or spoke any harm of thee. But we desire to hear of thee what thou thinkest. For as concerning this sect, we know that everywhere it is spoken against. And when they had appointed him a day, they came to many, there came many uh, to him into his lodging, 
to whom he expounded and testified the kingdom of God. Notice one thing. It says that this was, uh, that we know that everywhere it is spoken against. Just wanted to keep, keep note of that. Because sometimes we say that the gospel wasn't, you know, was the gospel preached everywhere at that time. Persuading them concerning Jesus both out of the law of Moses and out of the prophets from morning to evening. And some believed the things which were spoken and some believed not. So we see here that Paul was trying to convince his own people. That Jesus was the Christ. And not by works of righteousness that we've done, but by his mercy have he saved us. By his grace have he saved us. And when we depend on him, trust him, then we can have eternal life. But no, they wanted to do their own thing. They wanted to trust in their own works in keeping the law. Being blinded. So what happened? In verse 25, it says, And when they agreed not among themselves, they departed, after, they departed after Paul had spoken one word. He said, Well spoke the Holy Spirit by Isaiah the prophet unto our fathers, saying, Go unto this people and say, Hear ye, hearing ye shall hear, and shall not understand, and seeing ye shall see, and not perceive. For the heart of this people has become astruse, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes have they closed, lest they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and should be converted, and I should heal them. Be it known therefore unto you that the salvation of God is sent unto the Gentiles, and that they will hear it. And when he had said those words, the Jews departed and had great disputing among themselves. You see, Paul had tried to reach his people many times. He had tried to reach his people. You know, his custom was that when he went into a new place, he would go to the synagogue first. And when he was rejected at the synagogue, he would then go to the Gentiles. Well, here we see that he, he, he was the apostle to the Gentiles. And so here we see that when... Israel, they had already rejected Christ. You remember that when he came. But he was still trying to reach them. Now they reject the gospel, the gospel message. And so Paul turns his attention to the Gentiles. And so Gentiles are getting saved everywhere. Gentiles were getting saved. And therefore we see how the paradox happened. Now... I want to look at why they stumble. And let's take a look. Go back to Romans chapter 10. And verse 2. For I bear them witness that they have a zeal for God but not according to knowledge. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. They were stubborn. You say stupid? Oh, okay, I thought I heard stupid. <laughs> Um, but that's where humility comes in you know if we would humble ourselves we may be able to hear something and learn something thinking we know it instead of thinking we know it all but we see here that they say they had a zeal for God but not according to knowledge you remember Paul could say that you remember Paul in Acts, matter of fact, let's turn to Acts chapter 25, verses 9 and 11, where it says, and I hope I got the right verse.
doesn't look right. Anyway, I have another one if that doesn't work. That doesn't look right. Maybe I, I copied the wrong verse. But Galatians chapter 1, uh, verses 13 and 14. Galatians chapter 1. Verses 13 and 14. And there it reads. For ye have heard of my manner of life. In time past in the Jews religion. How that beyond measure. I persecuted the church of God. And wasted it. And profited in the Jews religion. Above many my equals. In my own nation. Being more exceedingly zealous. Of the traditions of my fathers. Paul was zealous, meaning that he had a zeal. He, had, he wanted to please God, but he went about it the wrong way. He didn't understand. His knowledge was not precise. It was not correct. He didn't have a full understanding. And therefore, he, went, he had... Um, he, he went about it incorrectly now we're going to talk about that more because there's so much to understand about knowledge when he talks about knowledge and we'll try to do that next week um, if the Lord allows um, and you, again you'll be able to see from the Old Testament have a better understanding, I think, of what's happening in the new.